Hello and welcome back to this course of videos on MongoDB. Now in this video we'll be looking at something called aggregation, which is basically performing things like count and sum and average uh, commands against the uh, field values within your collections. Now in order to demonstrate this, I've created a separate collection called products. Um, now Instead, the reason why I created a separate collection for products rather than, for example, embedding my products within my customers collection. Um, if you remember before, we have this orders field within our, uh, the documents within our customer collection. And we talked before about we didn't embed the information uh, for sellers within um, the orders field uh, because we have this seller tier field which we can frequently be up, uh, updating. Now the same thing applies to products. Now we wouldn't, we could uh, potentially because we have product reference within our uh, the orders field within our customers collection, we could potentially have embedded all of our product information in here. However, if you look at the products table, there are a number of things in a number of fields within the product, within each product document that could change. So for example, the price could change. The seller could decide they want to change their price. The quantity will most definitely be changing as we sell different units. We will sell, we'll have 24, we'll sell one, it will drop to 23. And also the seller ID, you know, seller number two could be selling this product right now, but, um, you know, they could stop selling it and then perhaps seller number five could start selling it instead. Now you'll see on the customers table, we did actually have price um, and seller ID. However, this is the price and the seller for this particular order, for order ID number one. However, in the products table, so this is, so this order here could have happened a year ago. And just because, um, just because seller ID number two was selling product 1A for 89.99, that doesn't mean that that's going to be the same right now. You know, right now it could have changed. Right now a, that particular product could be under a different seller for a different price. So this products table is actually reflecting um, the state of play as it is right now, what we would call a snapshot. Now, in order to illustrate aggregation better, I'm just going to sort my products table by seller ID. Here, if you remember the sort method, remember this was called chaining. This is actually chaining multiple methods together. I'm just going to sort ascending by my seller ID. So if I just run this, we can see now seller number one, the first three records belong to seller number one, the first three, sorry, documents or products uh, belong to seller number one, and then the fourth document or product belongs to seller number two. Now, in terms of aggregation, I am going to open up a new shell and I'm going to paste this command in here and I'm going to walk you through it. So you can see here um, we have our database which is shoe store dot collections. Um, the products collection is a child of the uh, DB object and then here we have our aggregate method here with our opening and closing parentheses. Now aggregate is our new method. So you can see within these parentheses, first of all we have an array. Within that array, right now, all that we have is this one single object in here. Now this object has a key value pair. The key is this new um, expression here, this new command called dollar $group. Now this is saying we want to group our data and grouping is really just another word for combining 
all merging. Now, so what we need to tell um, Mongo now is, and we'll tell it within this sub object, so the value for this key value pair, is how we actually want Mongo to merge this data together. So you can see the value of this key value pair actually has two parameters passed to it with a comma between them. The, the first parameter, we are saying what we want to group by. So which field we want to group by. So I actually want to group by the seller ID field. I want to do some kind of calculation based upon um, what the seller is. So I want to find out something um, about the different sellers within here. So that's why I'm grouping by this particular field, seller ID. Now, this ID key is designating seller ID as the field that we're going to group by. So that's the first parameter that we pass into this object here. Now, the second parameter, we're actually saying, what action do we want Mongo to take? Do we want to count? Do we want to sum? Do we want to average? Okay, so the the key you've got a key value pair here again for this parameter. Here's your key, here's your value. Now the key can be whatever you want to name your calculation. Now I want to do a, a count of products, so I am just going to write count of products. And this is the um, value uh, or the key um, that it's going to give uh, to my results. So the label it's going to give to my results. Now, um, so this key, the value of the key value pair, again, is an object. And I'm using the sum operator here. However, I'm passing a one. I'm not, what I'm not doing is this is actually going to count rather than sum. And it's going to count the occurrences of seller ID within my products collection. This is going to count um, how many times does the seller ID, how many documents are there in my product selection um, where the seller ID is one and how many documents in my collection exist where the seller ID is two. So that's what this is going to do. Um, this second parameter here, putting one, means you, you count rather than sum. If I'd have put a field value here, I could have summed by that field value. But here I'm just saying I'm grouping by seller ID. And although I'm using the sum operator, I actually just want to count. So I want to count the um, number of occurrences of seller ID. So if we just run this now, you'll see. So I can see here's, here is our uh, result set. And what it's saying is, so here, the, the, um, again, here, this ID is, is our label here, you see. And we, we designated the ID of seller ID. So this is saying the uh, seller ID of six, um, that had the count of the, the number of times that the seller ID of six appears in here is one and we can see here that it is only one in fact to, to make this a little bit easier to read i'm actually going to add an extra um, object so right, right now we, we've only passed a single object within our um, aggregate aggregate method and we have an array here we pass a single object um, similar to the chaining that we did um, with when we did find and sort here, this chaining, you can do a similar thing with aggregation. However, you don't use dot notation. Um, I can use a comma and I can pass a second object in here, um, which will be the, and this second object will allow me to sort these documents. And I'm going to say, I'm going to sort, and I want to sort by ID ascending and this will make it a little bit easier for us to read so you can see 
I've sorted now, so we can see, okay, so the ID of 1, the seller ID of 1, has a count of three documents. And if we go to our, and look at our collection here, we can see seller ID of 1 has 1, 2, 3 documents or products that belong to seller 1. Um, let's go down to um, seller ID of 3. We are saying there are two documents or two products provided by seller ID of 3. And we go down and we find, you see, we've sort, particularly sorted, this is a seller ID of 3, and this product is a seller ID of 3. So that's 2. So this is how our count is working. So to reference it back again, we, we, we said we want to group by seller ID. So then this is, this gives us this key value pair, saying the ID is seller ID. The seller ID of 1, that's what we're grouping by. And our second parameter here is saying, uh, this is the, um, the, the, the key of the key value pair that I wanted to name, that I could name it any one I wanted. I wanted to call it count of products. And then the value, this key value pair, I'm using my sum operator, but I'm counting by inserting this um, number one here. So, so far within our group, so we're using our group operator here, and the value of the key value pair, um, so far this, this object, which is the value of our key value pair, we've only asked for uh, the count of products. What if I wanted to um, also uh, sum um, the, for example, I wanted to sum the quantity. So for each seller, I wanted to know, so for each seller ID, what is the sum of all the quantities. So for example, seller number one, they have three products, one with a quantity of 15, one with 22, one with 17. How would I actually do that? Now it's relatively simple uh, and similar to a count. If I just copy this here, um, I still want um, to be grouping by seller ID as I am with my count. Um, I'm going to change my count of products to sum of quantity. So that's going to be my um, label, if you like. And I'm still using my summer operator, but instead of just putting one, which would result in me counting, I actually am going to name the field. Now the field that I want to sum is quantity. Now, if I'm going to put quantity here, I do actually have to um, put a dollar in here. You can't just put the field name. I do actually have to put a dollar in here. Now, this is set. So now I am telling Mongo I want to sum the, the field named quantity uh, and, and group by seller ID. To notice... What, the, the dollars are actually telling Mongo that we are performing a command. So anytime when you see a dollar in front of a field value, it's saying we want to do something um, with that particular field. So if I actually run this now, I don't need that command then. Um, if I run this now, you can see now we've got our sum of quantity. So for the ID of 1, it's saying 54. And if we look at our seller ID of 1, 15 plus 22 plus 17 is 54. So that's great. So we can also do, there's a couple of other, other similar commands we can use here. We also have average. So again, I'm doing exactly the same thing. I am just going to average of quantity would be my label. And this time I'm actually changing my sum to AVG, but I'm still um, using the dollar quantity because quantity is the field I wish to average. And you can see here's my average of quantity for my ID of 1. So my average of 15 and 22 and 17 is, uh, sorry, where are we? Uh, is 18. There we go. Now, the last one I'll just quickly show you is you can do max and min. So I'm not going to, I'll just look at the max. So I'm going to say max of quantity and that is dollar max. 
So we can say the maximum quantity is 22. Now we go back to our Excel ID of 1, and we can see the biggest one of the three is actually 22. So let's have a look at the same thing on the SQL relational side in our MySQL database. So here we're, here's our products table in our MySQL database. I'm just going to paste the SQL statement required in here and then walk you through it. So what we're saying here, at a summary level, I want to select filler ID field. And I also, my, my second thing that I want to select is a count of the seller ID field. Name that count of products. I want to select it from my products table. Now this is key, group by. I want to group by seller ID. Now, if we compare this against our NoSQL side, so you can see here, so I'm selecting seller ID as a field and I'm grouping by seller ID. The equivalent in a NoSQL database is this here. Here I am saying I want to group by, I want to group by the seller ID field, which is what we're saying here, group by seller ID. And we also want to select it because we want to see seller ID in the results. These are the results here. So you're seeing I'm selecting seller ID, means it's here. Also I'm grouping by seller ID, which as I said, the equivalent is this piece here. Now count seller ID as count of products, which is generating this field here. See the count of products field, the alias here is the column name, and the count of seller ID, or the count of, this is really the count of products, uh, or the count of rows in the products table um, that have this particular seller ID. So the equivalent here, count as count of products, is here. You see count of products this is our alias, so our field name here. Um, we just resource it. Um, and then you can see here is where we, this is the command that we gave to our NoSQL to count, you know, the, the, uh, the count, the instances of each seller ID. So count the documents in the collection. So this is what we're, what we're performing here. The from is from products on the no SQL side, that's equivalent there. Um, and then the group by, we've already explained. So that is actually uh, counting. So to look at the other um, commands, uh, sum, average, and max, we're going to, just going to make a little bit more room here. Um, I am going to copy this down to the second line, so we can keep the field to a separate line. So I'm going to add my max first of all, sorry, not my max, my sum. I'm just going to copy this. So we want to, we're going to use the sum keyword. The field that we're going to sum is quantity. And then I'm going to call this uh, sum of quantity. Now, if I quickly run this, you will see there we go. It gives us our sum of quantity as an extra field here. And now I'm going to add my average. So that is a very similar expression to what we just performed here. I'm going to change AV uh, sum to average and change the alias as well. And run this and you can see that gives my average of quantity. So you can see I've done sum and average here, which is the same as we did on Mongo. Here we had our sum of quantity and our average of quantity. And now we're going to do our max of quantity. So just to do the max, I'm going to put a co comma here to as we're, we're creating a new field. And I'm going to paste that in there. I don't know how that got in there. <laughs> uh, change the average keyword to max. And then change the alias to max of quantity. And then rerun this and you can see we've got our maxim. So that is the equivalent on the NoSQL side. So I hope this gave you a good idea of how to aggregate 
in NoSQL and SQL databases and count some average and max. I also introduced us to a chaining or what's also called piping because we grouped um, first of all and then we sorted. We're going to continue that in the next video with other um, commands we could other commands we can chain or pipe. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video.